Hi everyone. So today we are going to talk about the reaction of ferrous sulfate crystals. And you will also see an experimental video of this at my YouTube channel. I will add it. First, see that reaction and then study this. You will be able to relate more with what I am trying to say. Okay. So now let's get started with our reaction. So our reaction is of FeSO4 and it is having seven molecules of uh, water of crystallization is present in this FeSO4. Now, some of the students find it difficult to remember that how many H2O, how can you remember it? So I have a trick for all those students for whom it is difficult to remember this. And the trick is see how many alphabets are there. So you all can see one F is there, one E is there, one S is there, and four O are there, right? That means seven alphabets in total. So from there, you can remember this seven H2, okay? You know, the color of this FeSO4 also, you have to remember the color of this FeSO4 is green in color, okay? It is green in color, pale green, okay? It is pale green in color. So when you are going to heat it, when you will heat it, not use... I will only write the colors with the same name, okay? Now, we're going to use some heat in this. After using the heat, what is going to happen? You will hear some cracking noise. And the cracking noise is because this water of crystallization, which is present in this crystal, is going to move out. And that you can see around the neck of the bottle also, okay? So, it will become... When the water of crystallization will be removed, it will become Fe2, FeSO4. So this FeSO4 is white in color. And when you will still heat it further, I'm actually telling you what happens actually. Like in your book, you'll find only one simple reaction which is written, but actually it is more than that. So first, if you're heating that pale green color FeSO4 dot 7 H2O because that is present inside the structure, right? That is present in the, this FeSO4. This is water of crystallization. When you will heat it, first the cracking noise will come and this all water will start coming out. And you can see that around the neck of the bottle also, okay? And this FeSO4 will then start turning its color from pale green to white in color. And when you will still heat it further, you will get the products as Fe2O3 plus SO2 and SO3. So this Fe2O3 is the rust. You all know that, right? So it is reddish, reddish brown in color. This Fe2O3 formed will be reddish in brown, reddish brown in color. Okay. And these two gases will be evolved there, SO2 and SO3. Now, you know, these gases are acidic in nature. These two gases are acidic in nature. <coughs> I'm really sorry. That means if you are going to bring uh, let's say these two gases are, I'm making it, let's say these two gases are coming out from here. SO2 and SO3, they're coming out from here. So these gases are coming and you will bring a litmus paper, a blue litmus paper you bring near it. This is a blue litmus paper, okay? If you will bring blue litmus paper and you will insert this blue litmus paper inside this test tube, you will see that this blue litmus paper will change its color to red, showing that showing that the evolved gases SO2 and SO3 are acidic in nature, okay? So this is how you can test that which gases are coming out if they're acidic or if they are not acidic. Now, one more property of SO2, if I tell you, SO2 have reducing property. Now, what and how it is going to reduce? Let's see. Okay, now. We are going to have K2Cr2O7, that is potassium dichromate, acidified potassium dichromate. That means I can also add H2SO4 to this. Now, if you will take SO2 gas, so the SO2 gas which is coming out, and if, if you collect that gas through the delivery tube and then you insert in the mixture of this K2SO4, sorry, K2Cr2O7 and H2SO4, you will notice this. Here you all can see that CR2 is in plus six oxidation state. From here, it will change to plus three oxidation state and it will become CrSO4. 
So it will become Cr2. This will become chromium sulfate. Okay, this is what you are going to get here. So here it is in plus six oxidation state, and here it is in plus three oxidation state. So this is from plus six to plus three, it is reduction. And this reduction is done by this SO2 present here. And that is the reason I'm calling it a reducing agent. So you can always remember it that SO2 is having reducing properties. And if I actually tell you about how and where we use this SO2, SO2 can be used for the bleaching of the paper because SO2 have decolorization property. It can decolorize anything. Okay, so generally we use it for the cloths and also for the paper. Okay, it is used for the discolorization of paper and also for the cloths. And if I tell you about SO3, SO3 is very, very corrosive in nature. Okay, so it can produce burns also. So SO3 is very corrosive. So I hope all of you have got something new here because this is a basic reaction which is written in your NCRT book, but it is not just what it is written in your NCRT book, it is more than that, right? So this is the actual story behind it. You all can just balance it, okay? I'm not balanced it, but this is what all is going to happen here. So yeah, please make sure that you all like, share and subscribe to my channel. First see the reaction and then see you will be able to understand it more in a more better way, okay? Take care, bye-bye all of you.